golfers continually ask me, Lee, where can we get a cassette with your golf tips? You people are always after me. And I love it, but I've always said that my fans and followers deserve the very best I can give them. So what I've done is selected what I think is the best of my golf tips, the ones that have been on the TV network the last couple of years. We wanted you to enjoy these tips so you could better your golf game. The more times you run this cassette, the better chance you have of overcoming your problems. So all you have to do is put it in your VCR and you've got old Lee as your personal pro right in your living room. <laughs> I hate this shot. I don't even want to show it to you. Flown the green. I've got a very severe slope here, chipping on to a very, very hard green. Are you having a little problem with this shot, landing it too far short? Well, chances are that you're using your old stroke, hands in front of the club, taking loft off the club, and balls hitting on the green and running too far. What you have to do here, when you approach the ball, open up the blade and break your hands immediately away from the ball. As you're coming back down into the stroke, stop the left hand at the ball, almost like there is a wall there. This enables your right hand to break underneath and it adds loft to the club. Let me demonstrate for you. Mm. <laughs> Not bad for a guy that hates this shot. All you have to do is break, stop the left hand. You're gonna get that ball a lot closer in the future. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Are you guilty of doing that? Moving that head way before the club ever gets to the ball? Well, we're all guilty of it sometimes. Well, I'll tell you what you have to do. If you keep missing these greens and you're having a difficult time getting the ball up and down, you could be looking up on this ball. Let me see if I can help you with this. First of all, what you have to pick is the right club for that particular shot. Pick out a spot on that green. Very important that you land the ball on that spot. When you approach the ball and you're looking up to check for distance, the last thing that you look at before the head comes back is that spot. Now, what's very important is to keep your head down. Never look up and listen for the ball to land on the green. Mm. <laughs> it's not very difficult. The only two things that you have to do, keep that head down and aim at that spot. One of the things that bothers me probably more than anything is when I see an average player walk into a bunker with a 7-iron in his hand. Now, there's nothing wrong with having a 7-iron in your hand, but you have to have perfect conditions for a 7-iron. One, the bunker has to be very smooth and the ball setting on top of it. Two, you have to have a very low lip on the bunker. Three, you have to have a lot of green to work with. Now, you're probably sitting in your living room and you're looking at Ole and saying, hey, that's what I use as a 7-iron, but I don't have any success with it. Problem probably is that you're using too much hand action and you're either hitting the ball fat or you're blading it into the lip. Now, the correct way to do this is to actually use your, not only your putting grip, but also get closer to the ball and use your putting stroke. Now, remember, the most important thing in this swing is that your body is perfectly still. And the great thing about it is you don't have to go to a bunker to practice it. You can do it right in your living room. And we got ourselves a tough one right here. We've got us a downhill eye. We've got a bunker to negotiate with here. We've got a close cut flag. And we got us a little bass pond over there. Well, it's not that difficult of a shot. If you're dumping this ball in this bunker, chances are that you're breaking a little too much when you're going to execute this shot. You're hitting behind it and you're dumping it in the bunker. There is an easy way to play this shot, and it's very simple. Open up the club face, play the ball in the middle of your stance, but the most important part is to keep the butt of the club and the forearm in a straight line all the way through the shot. Mm. I broke a little bit on the way back, but I held on through the swing.
And then you walk up on lies like this. This is when I wished I was six foot five. It's not that difficult of a shot. What I do is I take an eight iron. I open up the blade wide open. The reason is because I don't want the grass to catch on the heel and bring it over. I make sure that I keep the butt of the club and the forearm again in one line. I aim a little to the right of target. Get in, Bob. Get in. Both shots are played approximately the same way. Don't be afraid of it. You can do it. <laughs> How many clubs have you found on the golf course that someone's left, usually around the 17th green? And it's usually a 7-iron because people are very partial to chipping with 7 iron, regardless of what the chip calls for. Today I'm going to try and show you how to use various clubs from different distances using the same swing and letting the loft of the club do the work for you. I have a sand wedge here. I'm about 40 feet away from the green. I've got about 18 foot of green to work with. Using a putting stroke, letting the loft of the club do all the work for you. Now we'll move up about five or six feet and we'll use a nine iron. Again, using the same swing now, your putting stroke. Let the loft do all the work for you. Then we'll move up about 20 feet away from the green and we'll go to an eight iron. Reason we wanna go to an eight iron is because it has less loft, the ball will come out lower and run. Hmm. Then as you get a little closer, you can go down to the six iron. Again, the ball will come out lower and run a little more. One of my favorites is when I get around the green three or four feet away, I like to use a very low lofted club, a four iron. Just using the little putting stroke, it'll clear the fringe and run to the hole. There we go. Same swing with five different clubs. Don't be so partial to that seven iron. When you start saving strokes, tell them where you got it. The toughest chip shot in the game of golf. Well, the ball is rolled through the green up against some high fringe, and I've got about four or five feet to negotiate with to get to the green. Well, if you've been having bad luck with this shot, chances are you've been using a putter. And what happens with a putter is that you hit down behind the ball and there's too much grass between your putter and the ball. What we do is we use what we call a bellied wedge. We hit the ball with the front of the wedge. The reason for this is because the flange will actually push that grass down for us and actually hit this ball like a putter. Use your putting stroke. Get in, ball. Get in. Break. Break. Oh. Ran out of frijoles. Now, if you've gone through the green and you've only gone a couple of feet, but it stops in a little hole, again, a very difficult chip shot. Don't be afraid to belly that wedge. The ball will hop up, but it'll run up there on the green. Get in, ball. Get in. Don't forget, just because you missed the green, don't use that putter. Belly that wedge. It may save you some strokes. Does that look familiar to you? Every time you get 40, 50, 60 feet away, the old right hand is saying, hit it, hit it. And the old left hand says, I'm not moving, I'm not moving. And then you black out for a couple of seconds. Well, I think we all seem to have problems with that. But that's not really that big of a problem. You see, what happens on long putts if you're having difficult time getting them close to the hole is that you can't maintain the same amount of pressure on both hands. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. Taking this towel that's full of water. If you were washing this towel, you wanted to hang it up to dry and you wanted to squeeze the water out of it. You have the same amount of pressure on both hands. Taking this grip, putting the palm of the hands almost out facing you, gripping it and then applying pressure until you get your hands back square to the target. Taking two practice swings, and maintain that pressure throughout the stroke. 
stroke the putt, and maintain the pressure all the way through. And I guarantee you one thing, you're gonna quit three-putting a lot of those greens and get much, much closer. I'm not suggesting for you to take this towel full of water out there and wring the water out of it. You can practice that at home. And for some of you cats that have the yips, this could be your answer. <laughs> Over the years, I've given you many tips on how to make short putts. A lot of you, and the majority of you, still have a little trouble pushing the putts. Well, maybe I can help you a little bit on how to keep from pushing these putts to the right of the cup. Chances are that your left hand is too far underneath the grip. As you can see here. What happens is the left hand wants to work back to square, and it's opening the blade at impact. Let me hit a putt for you. Also, you could actually be going back too far inside. Now, what you have to do to keep from pushing these putts is try and get this left hand on top of the club to where the back of the left hand is actually square with the putter blade. This also will enable you to go back in a straight line. Let me show you. Don't forget, if you're missing the majority of the putts to the right-hand side of that cup, your left hand is probably too weak. Get it on top. Get the back of it square with that blade, go back straight away from the ball, and you'll make the majority of those putts. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> Short putts. We're all guilty of missing them. How many times have you walked into a clubhouse and you've seen your best buddy or your girlfriend and you've said, what did you shoot today? And they say, well, I shot 85, but if I could have just made all those short putts around the hole, I could have shot in the middle 70s. Well, there's a reason why you miss short putts. One could be lack of concentration. Two, you're probably waiting for your buddies to say, that's good, pick it up. And chances are they're never going to say that. But the reason that short putts are missed is that you're probably taking the old approach, like you hit the long putts, playing the ball a little too far forward, taking the putter too far back. Subconsciously, your mind's telling your hands, hey, I'm too far back. I'm going to have to slow down when I hit this ball. Results, deceleration, miss to the right, you miss to the left, or you hit it off the green. What you have to do here is take the old approach, just like you're going to hit a long putt. Take the left foot now, and move it about three inches closer to the hole. This puts the ball back in to the center of your stance. Results, shorter backswing, shorter follow through. <laughs> There's only two things that you have to remember on a sharp putt. Chances are no one's ever gonna say, that's good, pick it up. Number two, Put the ball back into your stance a little bit, shorter backswing, shorter follow through, and you'll probably make all those short putts around the cup. And then you'll probably start hearing, pick it up, that's good. <laughs> You're probably wondering what I'm doing, saying, oh, Lee's got putts going all over that putting green. Well, I'm actually practicing my putting just a little bit. You know, I've never seen a golfer go out to the golf course and not have a chance before they start their round to throw down a couple of balls on the green and hit some putts. They might not have a chance to go to the driving range and hit a few practice balls, but always on the putting green. And that's kind of what I wanted to talk to you about today. There is a way to practice putting. How do you practice your putting? Do you get on the putting green with two or three golf balls and putt the one direction, or do you go out on a holiday? or a weekend, or late in the afternoon when you get home from work to the club and you pour out 20, 25 balls and putt from one direction just to the hole. Well, in my opinion, that's not really the best way to practice. And the reason for this is, is because it's only a rehearsal. It's a muscle memory. After you hit two balls, you could actually do it blindfolded. And chances are you could never duplicate it on the golf course. So the next time you go out to the club and you want to practice your putting, take a couple of balls and hit them in different directions. This will help you not only with feel, but also with direction. <laughs> Shorten to the left, huh? <laughs> 
Cutting across the ball, coming up short and to the left. Well, doesn't make any difference where we play. We're always going to hit some putts like that. Yeah, there may be a couple of things that you're doing wrong with this particular putt. One is that you could have the ball too far in the hosel. Results, taking the putter outside the line and cutting across it. What you have to do is the next time you go out and hit a few practice putts, get you a couple of pieces of tape. Put one piece of tape on the toe of the putter. If you don't have a center line for a sweet spot, make your own sweet spot. Put another piece of tape the center of the putter. Address the putt now on the outer tape, on the toe. This will help you go back inside and work towards the center, the sweet spot. Let me show you again. If you're cutting across, coming up short and to the left, chances are you have it in the hosel, taking it back outside, cutting across it. Put it out on that toe, go to the center. <laughs> and I think you're gonna make most of those. Get you a couple of pieces of tape. If it works, tell them where you got it. I thought I was too old to learn how to putt. I didn't know what I was doing wrong, but I found out that I had the ball too far forward in my stance. By having it too far forward, the putter was actually coming up when it hit the ball. Results, when I decelerated, the ball either went to the right or it went to the left. I found out that by moving the ball back inside my left heel gave me a chance to hit the ball on the way down instead of up. You can even hear the difference in the clicks. We all have putts that we dislike. There doesn't happen to be one that I dislike, but I want to show you one that you probably have a difficult time with. And that's a putt that's going downhill and breaking from your left to your right. You having trouble missing that putt way to the right, hitting it too hard. Chances are you're probably hitting it the same way that you're hitting an uphill putt by having it in the middle of your stance and your hands actually being right under your chin. Now, to help you make this particular putt, which is one of the most difficult putt there is when you play golf, is that you want to get your hands forward. Move the ball a little bit up off your left heel, but make sure that you move your hands forward. Now, the reason for this is because the toe will cover for you and start the ball out left on the line that you want. And you cover with the toe. Don't forget, there's only two things you have to do on a left to right breaker. Move the ball forward a little bit and make sure that the toe of your putter covers for you. You're gonna have a lot of downhill putts. The first thing that you wanna do on a downhill putt is when you get in back of it to line it up, always pick a spot in front of the ball on your intended line. Never take your eyes off that spot. The reason for this is you wanna square the putter to the spot that you have picked. Don't look at the hole. Make sure that your hands are on the putter very lightly because you're gonna go downhill. Now look up at the hole only for distance. The next thing that you wanna do before you execute this putt is make sure that the hands and the putter blade work back together in one piece. Don't forward press them. Don't forget, make sure you keep your eyes on that spot, hold the putter very light in your hands, and make sure that your hands and putter blade work back together. I think you're gonna make a lot of downhill putts. The right to left breaker. It's probably your favorite putt also, and you know why is because 98% of you people out there slice a golf ball. So where are you gonna end up? You're gonna end up to the right of the hole, Chances are, if this green has any undulation whatsoever, you're gonna have a putt that breaks from right to left. Now, some of you people are missing a lot of these putts. Maybe you say, hey, he's talking about that's his favorite putt, and he's saying 98% of us have this putt, but we're not successful with it. There is a way to putt this putt and putt it very well. The technique of it is if you've been putting, and if you've had the ball positioned up off your left heel, Chances are you're coming up short and pulling it left. Let me show you what you do here. First of all, you move the ball way back into your stance. The reason for this is because when you catch the ball, you want the club face to be open so you can get it out on the line that you want. Second, you wanna make sure that the left hand has twice as much pressure 
than the right hand. And the reason for it is so it won't cup on you. It won't break on you. Here. Yeah. Don't forget, only two things you have to do here. Move the ball back eight inches and hold this hand very tight so it won't break on you. You make all of them. You know, when the professionals get into contention and they're coming down those last few holes, the last thing that we're looking for is an uphill putt or a green that's very heavy, very slow. Reason for it is because we got the old apple right here and we're having a difficult time getting that ball to the hole. We're either pushing it or we're pulling it, we're coming up short or we're hitting it too hard and it's going way back. Now, I'm not saying that you've got the apple, but I'm gonna show you three things that you have to do on an uphill putt and a very slow green. First of all, you wanna make sure that you have the same amount of pressure on both hands. You have to hold this club very, very tight with both hands. Two, make sure that if you take the putter back 10 inches, that you accelerate it the same amount of distance. Three, and most important, is that you keep the putter very low through the hitting area. The three things you have to do on a slow green or an uphill putt, hold the putter very tight in both hands. If you take the putter back 10 inches, accelerate it 10 inches, but the most important is to keep it low through the ball. Spit that apple out. Get it to the hole. How many times have I gotten on the green and two and left there with a five? Many times I've three putted. I'm sure you've done the same thing. You know why I've done it? I'm gonna show you why, and you're probably doing the same thing. One of my big problems is that I get my right hand too far on top. When I do that, my elbow comes out. When I get the hand on top and the elbow out, I go outside the line and I cut across the putt and it goes off to the right. The next time you go out and you're having trouble with these putts, get that elbow in. Get the right hand underneath. That'll make the putter come back inside and go out. Now, if you're breaking down in the hitting area, chances are that if you get you some popsicle sticks and you put them underneath your glove, now that will lock that wrist in. Practice with the elbow in, not breaking down through the hitting area. Don't forget, get the right hand underneath, get the elbow in, and use a couple of popsicle sticks in the back of your glove. You're gonna be dynamite on these greens.